Hi guys. Okay, today's topic is drone uh, licensing and registration. May the 14th, getting very close to June the 1st, which is the date that the new laws come in, and you should really have your drones uh, registered by then and uh, pass your your tests. So uh, I won't reveal whether I passed or not until after, until near the end of my video, but uh, let's have a look and see where I stand as far as the basic exam goes and as far as registration. So come on back. Okay guys, the test is over and I'll let you know at the end whether I passed or not. I'll show you a, a copy of it online uh, so I can prove to you that uh, whether I passed or failed. Um, there's 35 questions and you get 90 minutes to um, answer those questions. So what I did was... Um, divided my computer screen into two and I put the uh, test on one half and Google on the other half so I can Google search so I can search for some of the answers because uh, Transport Canada doesn't give you any information on uh, study material or anything like that so you just have to study what you think is, is going to be relevant. And there's probably thousands of questions, so if you fail the first time, you can try in 24 hours again. And it costs you $10 every time you, you try. It costs you $5 to register every drone that you have. Um, out of the 35 questions that I had, I would say that three, four, four questions were actual, really drone related. The other questions were aeronautical uh, aircraft and what have you. Uh, some of them actually, sorry for the noise there guys, uh, actually not pertaining to drones at all. They would be irrelevant. Um, you're not allowed to uh, mention any um, questions or uh, answers online. So. Uh, like everybody else, I'll avoid that. I won't show you any of the questions or, or anything uh, online. I'll show you my final result. And uh, show you my uh, my registration for, for the uh, Mavic Pro. And so, a couple of things that came up that I was very is very interesting uh, a lot of the a lot of the new rules and laws are gonna really restrict a lot of a lot of uh, just pleasure flyers um, right now you can fly up to 300 feet with the new laws you can fly 400 feet which is nice they they've raised that uh, at the moment you can't fly at night but in the new regulations you can fly at night as long as you have appropriate lighting um, you can not fly farther than line of sight. They give you up to 500 meters. Now that's actually pretty good distance away. Uh, I don't even know if you could really see it that far. The uh, Mavics are pretty small, so it'd be like a dot. But still, uh, the Mavics are, are meant to fly quite a ways away so that you can get dramatic uh, cinematic footage. And, uh, go in places where you couldn't really go otherwise. You, you can't walk there, you can't get there by car, no other possible way except by flying your drone there. Now uh, you can't fly over crowds of people, common sense. Uh, you have to be at least uh, 30 meters or 100 feet away from uh, groups of people and what have you which is uh, understandable. Somebody's uh, 
revving their engine it's not <laughs> sounds not too good um, there are another couple of uh, I just don't remember them now a couple of good uh, changes they've made and there's a couple there's some real bad changes like um, for example you can't fly your drone if you've had alcohol or drugs 12 hours uh, up to 12 hours before yet I can get in my vehicle drive to the nearest pub have a beer or two and drive home with a, a 2,000 pound vehicle uh, no problems but I simply cannot fly a drone if I've had one or two beer. Uh, so that's uh, one of them. Another one is, I think right now in the laws, you have to have your name, address and phone number posted on your drone. I hope when the new laws come out that you don't have to do that. I can put my first name, my phone number, and my registration number on the on the drone, but I will not put my address. That's an invasion of privacy. Someone could just, if I, my drone lands somewhere where I just don't want it to, it's unfortunate, the battery power wouldn't bring it back all the way home, and I land in somebody's backyard, a guy who is uh, mentally retarded or uh, just doesn't like drones at all he's gonna see my address on there and come to my house like that's uh, totally not right so I don't want that to happen at all uh, so I'm not gonna put my address on my drone I guess even if it means that maybe they'll they'll find you but I would explain myself for that uh, let's see what else there are some laws that are just totally not so good at all. Uh, having to know aeronautical things, airplane things, uh, uh, radio frequencies and what have you. We don't use radios, so I mean things like that wouldn't pertain to, to drones at all. Um, a lot of drone things to keep you safe, like they want you to do to fly, is common sense things. It's not necessarily uh, have knowing to have to pass a test or to have a, a license for your drone. It's common sense things. And it always takes one asshole to uh, make it real bad for everyone else. So, and uh, drones have never hurt any people yet, have never bumped into any airplanes. Nothing like that has happened yet. Uh, and I know that they understand that they want to avoid this, but uh, yeah, let's be realistic about the new rules and regulations. So, okay, stay tuned to the end of the video. That's what I'm going to show you uh, a video of online my test, how I did, uh, whether I have to take it over again, or uh, whether I've passed or not. So stay tuned to the end. Thanks, guys. Now, uh, they give you 35 questions and 90 minutes to answer them. So you've got a couple of minutes to actually look up each, each question uh, on uh, Google. Just Google the question and see what you get for an answer. I did have to guess at a few uh, pretty difficult to... to uh, worded on Google to find out what the answer was. I didn't study for it. They give you no material to study. So it's just, uh, you got to do the best you can. And like I said, I took my screen, divided it into two, put the uh, test on one half, uh, Google on the other half, and I just uh, Googled a lot of questions. Some I, I knew. Out of the 35 questions, I can tell you that uh, well, they must have a pool of a hundred or hundreds of questions and if you get it wrong You can take the test again within 24 hours. It costs you ten dollars every time you try um, Out of The 35 questions that I got I would say that There was three maybe four questions actually related to drones 
the other questions were related to just uh, uh, aircraft and and uh, knowledge of um, uh, aircraft so in my opinion the test isn't going to make you any more safe drone pilot than common sense some of them I actually kind of knew because I used to fly uh, large aircraft 737s on online with friends uh, in a flight simulator uh, with air traffic control so I knew some of the terms and technology and, and stuff like that but this is fantastic <laughs> okay here we go registration no drone has been registered so let's go registration it's gonna ask me a whole bunch of okay non-refundable five dollar thing eligible for this and that uh, what you need before you start you should take three minutes to register it usually takes three minutes to to register your drone to begin you will need the following information the purchase date the make the model the serial number the weight uh, a MasterCard, yeah, they want money. Okay, begin registration. I purchased my drone, a new or used one, at uh, the date. The year. What is the make and model of your drone? What is the serial number? Okay, guys, I've got my drone registered. And here, my uh, this exam was completed on May... the 14th of the passing mark of 71 all in all let me have let me get a close-up look at this I got 71 percent and I only need 65 right on so I must have got one maybe two questions more right than are necessary to get a 65 probably one but I passed yes <laughs> I can legally fly in the right places of course but great fantastic guys and I passed the test